Casey Lightning here with um, Juan Archuleta, who will be fighting Henry Corrales just a couple of days at, at the former Inglewood, California. Now, I had all these questions written down, like, you know, Juan coming off a big loss, you have a big fight coming up, but dude, you look amazing. What is? What are you wearing today? <laughs> See, the whole goal here was to dress super nice so everyone forgot about the loss, right? <laughs> and it, it's worked so far. Yeah. But, uh, no, uh, dress to impress all the time, man. Uh, my wife and I are super into fashion. Uh, it's an expensive habit to keep up with but um you know we got the purple with the gold flake little black flake in there as well um got iced out by happy jeweler these guys are awesome um made some custom stuff for me and then the red bottoms out down here um you know just trying to uh we're a fashion sport you know in your hat yeah uh, i was able to get um in tampa we were crossing a place uh and i, I love hats uh top hats are awesome and uh we seen it, and then they, they were telling that they they, they paint it, hand paint it. And I was like, oh, can I get a custom one? They're like, yeah, well, would you like roses? I said, do you, can you do like roses and skulls? And they were like, yeah, for sure. We'll just create something, we'll send it to you, and we'll see how you like it. I was like, all right, perfect. Now, do you... <laughs> Is this just? Is this every time you leave the house that you're going to pick up a gallon of milk, or are you are you dressed like this? Like oh, that's, that's a little much, you know. But now fight week, I, I, I like to enjoy it. You know, I like to, um, you know, take it in the take it in, enjoy it, uh, dress nice, um, be prepared. You know, I've been around high profile fighters my whole career, like uh, champions, TJ, Cub Swanson, uh, Lance Palmer, and it's a responsibility being a champion. You know, if you carry yourself like one and you act like one, you know. There's, you're gonna be one, you know. So it's just a matter of time. I was very close my last fight, and uh, so now I just keep 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 that mentality going. All right, since you brought up the last fight, <laughs> yeah, for sure. Um, you haven't lost in about a zillion years, I guess, and you had a loss. What if, as soon as the other guy's hands get raised, what, what did that feel like? I mean, just as a fighter who's just so used to winning. Yeah, you know, you never want to lose, right? I mean, it's it's the most heartbreaking thing to do is lose. But when you lose and you weren't able to empty the glass, that's what's even more heartbreaking. And, uh, you know, there is just like... So you, weren't, you weren't able to what? Em uh, empty the glass, like give, give your, your best oh, okay. performance, you know? Like you're not able to go out there and just throw everything that you can, the whole kitchen sink, you know? And I, I wasn't able to do that, that fight for some reason, you know? And it was just like mental blocks that uh, had happened before the fight that you're just like dealing with and you know you it kind of sidetracks you a little bit and so you know there's a little bit of roadblocks in there but you you learn from it you move forward and you keep building and uh you take it as a lesson learned and uh, you know you take the same mentality that you have and you keep implementing it in your next fights and we say like empty the empty the glass do you mean like like when that when the when the fight ended you're like man i still have two more rounds on me or like or like or just like i didn't throw as hard as i wanted like what do you what do you like what is that mental block? Like, what is yeah, like the, the fourth and fifth round is where I started catching my groove and uh, is where I started having great success, uh, you know, and I was like, man, I wanted to go out there and have that first success in the first round. If it, once you have that, that, that pressure that you're putting on and realize that this guy can't hurt you no matter what he throws at you, uh, you know, I was knocked down there in a couple, but I was still mentally there, you know, it's nothing that he did that, that had put me back on my heels. And if I would have known that from the beginning, I would have been able, it would have been a different outcome if I had the right people. I mean, I had the right people there, you know, I just like, if we had the right, warm-ups and stuff going into that fight um it would have been a, i know 100 percent it would have been a different outcome and i'm gonna be, and that's the great thing about sports you're able to build yourself up and go and get that rematch so you could go out there and, and show everyone that this is what should have happened first now we don't need i don't want to harp too much on the the loss but yeah. were, were there some were there some corner issues um with tj right before the fight or at least yeah, moments yeah. before the fight yeah i mean there was corner issues with uh tj that they had pulled him out but um you know uh, got ready with him at Cub uh, the whole the whole fight camp and you know they pulled him last minute um, and so it, it was a little bit of havoc but you know we still went in there I was still able to go and, and try to perform but next time you know it's, it's for sure going to be a different story now you suffered a loss it's easy to take fight I don't I don't want to say a lesser opponent but you're not coming back you're not you're not getting an easy fight coming back what did you choose did you did you tell Scott Give me the next toughest guy, or is this just the fight that was offered to you? Like, why this fight? 
So originally I was, I was trying to get on the Risen card, and uh, I guess Risen had agreed to give me Al Sakura, uh, the, uh, the, um, the older one, the 145. Or I said, yeah, let's do it. And then uh, right before they were going to finalize everything, uh, I guess the Rampage and Fedor was just too much finance on them. And so the, you know, they were like, you know what, we're going to pull Archuleta off with the Al Sakura fight, and they ended up putting, put, putting in Macapa. And so... Last minute, they're like, "Hey, um, you're in. Ho you're. Uh, we have a fight in the form. Henry's a local guy. You're a local guy. I'm like, great, man. A, lo a local fight. Like, come on, man. Like, we're we're in here, you know, fighting guys all over the world. You give me a local guy, but I guess it's just sell sell seats, put seats in the in, in there, you know, so in the arena. But it is a great fight, you know. Uh, any way you look at it, it's a it's a fight that fans are going to be able to sit back and enjoy and see 15 minutes of chaos." You know what? I'm. I was in Japan for the Rising card, and I'm really bummed you weren't on it. Now I was like, I, I, that would have been awesome if you were there. But uh, next yeah, year, Austin, Austin Kura looked great his fight, yeah. and it would have been a great fight. I mean, you know, it, it would have been awesome to go out there and experience it. But you know, what better way to come back and fight Henry anyway? This guy is known to. He's beaten five of my teammates, you know. So he's five and zero oh against my teammates, and it's just like, man, I gotta avenge some of these losses that my teammates are losing on him. So we'll see. So you. So I'm assuming you've been in the corner for. Some some, some other fighters that um, Kratos has fought, right? So you've seen him up close. Not, uh, in, the, oh, not, not in the corner, but on the sideline um, and trained with them and got him ready for Henry. So it's just like some things that I wish they could have done different. Hopefully I'm going to be able to go in there and implement those, di those, those differences that make the fight outcome different, you know? But we all have a game plan until you get hit by Henry and then you're like, oh shit, here we go. We got to figure out a different way to win. Yeah, that, actually, let's talk about, let's talk a little bit about Henry. What makes him so unique and, and, and dangerous, rather? The guy's like a zombie, man. You put him away, you think you put him away, and he wakes up out of the dead, you know? You're like, oh, shit. And so he comes back, and he still hits as hard as he would have in the first minute, you know? So that's what makes him a dangerous fighter is he's known to take one shot to give three of his best, and he's going to land them, and he's going to look to land them as hard as he can, and that's what makes him a dangerous fighter. Was there anything really to take as far as game playing? Was there anything you could really learn from his loss against Caldwell? Oh, yeah, for sure. I'm a wrestler uh, looking for the takedowns and the control, um, you know, and he just has frustration that he wants to stand up and be like, let me get after it, man. Like, don't put me down here. And so the frustration that brings is heavy. And I and I'm able to do that type of things in my fights. I haven't been able to show it in my last previous, you know, five fights with Bellator. But it's time to get back to the old one that got me here, that got me on the 18 fight win streak and go out there and dictate a controlled pace of chaos. And uh, I say that. That right but as soon as he starts swinging it's, it might be a different outcome <laughs> so. now um final question is um is featherweight where you're at now is it is it is it for the is it gonna be featherweight in the future or are you still looking at 135 you know what uh i came in here with four different titles and four different weight classes i was doing it before it, a lot of these guys were doing it that are claiming to be all these double champs and stuff you know but uh I feel like I'm getting the reins held on me a little bit, and I want to be able to do that. I want to be able to fight more uh, each year, you know, five, six times. I'm not, I'm not getting any younger, you know. It's not about my. It's just more about performing. I want to go out there and keep building my brand, keep building my following up, and let people know that I am a performer. I, like I don't want to just fight one, uh, three times a year. That ain't. That's not me. I want to fight six times a year. I don't care if I lose all six. I still want to fight six times, and every six time, every six performances, I'm going to perform. You know, like let go of the reins. Let me go out there and fight. Let me let me step in last minute. Let me give me some notice if you want me to drop down to 135. Let me go up to 155. Um, you know, just give, give me some notice so I can put on the weight and, and go out there and, and perform every two months if need be, every month, every six weeks, whatever. You know, whenever you have a, uh, people fall out, let me take their spot. You know, so that's that's the type of guy I am as a fighter. I'm a performer. I'm always in the gym training my ass off. I'm always in the gym getting bigger, stronger, faster, and staying and trying to keep myself as young as possible. Awesome. Super excited to see you Saturday. Appreciate it. Thank you.